Hi, I'm Reen again on Reader Day Club. This one's a very short video. My sister likes to call them book shots, where I talk about Fathers and Sons by Ivan Turgenev and why you must absolutely read the book for this character called Bazarov. But before that, let me tell you that this book is the most accurate representation of uh, the difference in opinion that exists between any two generations, hence fathers and sons. The book is also about many other things uh, and the backdrop is the 19th century, um, 1860s to be more specific. So it's about the Russian government, it's about uh, the awful tradition of serfdom that existed that existed during that time. It's about pretentious nobility and a few other things. So what the author has done with Bazarov is carved out a sort of a rebel case, a nihilist, who believes that stuff like progress, principles, liberalism, aristocracy, and even love, as a matter of fact, are foreign, useless words. Personal egoism and also philosophy he labels as romanticism and nonsense. At the same time, Bazarov believes that the denouncers of society are no good either. Talking about unconscious creativity, art, and things like that is also equally suffocating. He says that there's no need to have even a smidgen of artistic sense because what good does it do in the face of actual, real life experiences? We all have an identical biology and to a certain extent even our souls and moral qualities are pretty much the same, with little variations of course. People are like trees in a forest, he says. No botanist is going to study each individual birch tree. Then this nihilist hipster, as someone referred to him in one of the articles I read, is not himself immune to the temptations of love. Even though he says that love is the devil's own mess. Now I'm going to read an excerpt from the book that really hit home with me. Despite that, you have to keep in mind that there's a bit of a contradiction, though not in sincerity, between Bazarov's beliefs and some of his actions. But then that's the thing with Ivan's uh, characters in the book. It's neither black nor white, meaning there's no right or wrong. You don't feel like you despise anyone for their beliefs even though you don't agree with them. Every man is hanging on a thread. Any moment an abyss can open up beneath him but he still has to go and think up all manner of troubles for himself and ruin his life. There's another character in this book that I also liked, uh, Anna Odinsova, the woman Bazarov falls in love with. She seems to emanate this, uh, this very calm uh, indifference, uh, for the most part at least. She knows life, she knows sorrow, she knows what matters and what to take in her stride. Uh, you know, it was actually very endearing to read about her in the book. So yeah, uh, I think that's about it. And, and the prose is so poetic in the book. But the heat of noon passes and evening and night fall. And there comes the return to the quiet refuge where there is sweet sleep for the tormented and the weary. The grave may hold a passionate, sinful, rebellious heart, but the flowers growing on it gaze serenely at us with their innocent eyes. They do not only speak to us of everlasting peace, of that great peace of indifferent nature, they also speak of eternal reconciliation and of life without end. Okay then, I hope uh, you read the book. Um, it's, it's surely a classic piece of Russian literature. It's actually only 200 pages long, so that should be easy, right? Let me know and 
thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a nice day.